All right, hey, we're back. May 22nd, 2024, we got lots going on. Uh, Keith Archer with Ultimate Shrimp Cure. Ultimate Shrimp Cure High Octane and Ultimate Egg Cure, okay? Today I'm gonna talk a little bit about summer steelhead. We're just transitioning out of our spring Chinook season. Uh, still some spring Chinook to be caught, still our share of them out there, a thousand a day or so going over Bonneville Dam. Uh, a few hundred going over the Willamette Falls. Uh, some of the tribs are still, you know, holding fish. Some may open up soon. Uh, hopefully there's some, you know, back in the hatcheries, give some opportunities, some more opportunities and stuff. Uh, but summer steelhead, guys, this is one of my favorites. Hands down, one of my favorites. Grew up summer steelhead. Uh, honestly, it was one of the first things I ever caught alone without my dad. 18-pound uh, summer steelhead, lower East Fork of Lewis, uh, April 18th. I caught that fish, I remember. Um, Thing kicked the crap out of me. Caught it on a whole sand shrimp, big male sand shrimp, super low water. Uh, threw it out there, saw flash, 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 flash. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And then all of a sudden my rod just went away, went. All right, enough about that. Let's move on to what we're here for, okay? Uh, Columbia River, all right? The Columbia River uh, has a phenomenal summer steelhead fishery. Absolute phenomenal, uh, phenomenal summer steelhead fishery. We have the opportunity to fish from the shore. We have the opportunity to fish from boats. Um, Mouse of some of these tribs. We'll start to stage fish. Uh, let's talk a little bit about all these, okay? I'm gonna make it quick. Lower Columbia River. The lower you go, the better it gets, okay? One, you're the first one to show the fish the bait. Two, you got harder currents. When you have harder currents, it pushes the fish to the shorelines so when the tides are going out and pulling aggressively. So easy to say that you can channel fish, funnel fish, those sort of things to shorelines the further down the Columbia River you go. Uh, move up river, you know, you've got places to plunk, you know, you got places like County Lane Park, Willow Grove, Kalama River, Lewis Mount or Woodland Bottoms, you know, up to Frenchman's Bar, up to the, you know, Vancouver area, lots of places on the Washington side of the river, as well as plenty of places on the Oregon side of the river. Find you a spot, drive in, put your rod holder in the ground, um, find your proper setup. And I'm gonna share that with you today here real quick, the setup that I use when I'm plunking. It's one of my favorite fisheries. Sit back, you know, put up a pop tent, get out of the sun, enjoy the weather, do some swimming, catch steelhead like crazy. Um, it's awesome, it's good times. Let's talk a little bit about the bait, okay? Uh, these are some shrimp that I did up here on the 21st, uh, yesterday. So just getting these prepared, getting them ready. Did these with Ultimate Shrimp Care High Octane. You guys are probably wondering which one I would pick, which of these three I would pick for Summer Steelhead. I'd pick High Octane. Um, I've got a couple things in there that definitely uh, Steelhead pay attention to, okay? Um, keep that in mind. Another bottle here that I did, oh, two weeks ago. Um, one of which here I'm gonna put some scents in. So what scents do I add to enhance the, the, the bite and stuff? Well. Uh, one, let's go through the quick steps and process and how these are done, okay? Ultimate Shrimp Care High Octane was used in this bottle. You take half a bottle, all right? Or you can divide it in thirds if you'd like to. The bottle says half, you know, per quart, but uh, there's 14 ounces in here. You could go four, four and a half ounces. You can go seven ounces. If you go seven, you get a little darker shrimp. You go four, you can do three quarts in total. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's up to you what you want to do this is about four ounces of cure and these are the color of the shrimp you're going to get okay so a nice bright vibrant pink shrimp okay super clean looking um yeah these shrimp are shrimp are dialed they look beautiful got some whiskers on that one you know me and whiskers that's where we're at uh let's add some scents though what do we do to enhance these coon shrimp and catch more fish. Draw the attention of the steelhead. I'm gonna share three cents with you. Uh, another concoction that I use, okay? Procure Shrimp Prawn. I've used that with Spring Chinook. Love it in the steelhead version. So I go about a teaspoon, like so, okay? Smelly Jelly Craw Anise, hands down, one of the better smelly jelly smells for summer steelhead, okay? About a teaspoon, all right? And then the trusty Mike's shrimp oil okay pop the top about a teaspoon all right lid back on shake them around here just a little bit so i'm going to move those scents through now it'll take two days three days that sort of thing for these scents to kind of disperse absorb and work their way into the shrimp so keep in mind um 
yeah, just kind of once in a while, just rotate these, you know, keep them, keep them moving. A uh, little bit longer term sh shelf life, add rock salt, okay? Half cup, three quarters of a cup, put it in there. It's a visible indicator. It's gonna show you, uh, you know, your salinity level in these jars. It's important to keep them at 100% or above uh, to extend your shelf life. So keep that in mind. Um, let's talk about plunking setups. I got something hanging back here on the wall. I'm gonna switch you right back here and we're gonna take a look, okay? So, broad, line okay we're coming over and i've created these I'm, i've made made these myself these splitters what we have is a six bead bead chain okay a hot shot dual snap clip barrel swivel okay and i go to about a 40 inch leader down to a two hot hook okay and this happens to be the watermelon color spin glow all right now i go four and a half feet across as a splitter Okay, over to a four bead chain, can be a six bead chain as well, doesn't matter. Off the bottom of the bead chain, I'm gonna bring you in a little closer, I've got a large dual lock snap. That's where I'm gonna attach my lead, four ounce, five ounce, six ounce, sometimes eight ounce leads, okay? And again, from here, a small dual lock snap, a barrel swivel down to my second spin glow, which is a much darker color, black wings. You guys know I love black wings. Two -aught, single two aught hook. Um, and those are size six spinglows. I do get away with some size eight, size eight spinglows as well. Um, but that is the setup that I use, okay? Eight and a half, nine foot rod, 10 to 20, 12 to 25 pound rating. You gotta be able to cast that five, six, eight ounce lead, okay? Um, nine foot rods are much easier to work with than an eight and a half because as you're casting the setup, that splitter you're seeing on the wall there, okay? Uh, at the four and a half, five foot mark, you're gonna lay that behind you, okay, on the beach, lay it behind you, kind of walk forward a little bit to where you're kind of dragging the lead. The top line leader is gonna be off the ground. The back one's gonna be dragging in line with you, okay? And then it's one fluid motion as you make that cast, okay? It comes up off the ground, you send it, whatever distance you need to go. Obviously, the higher up the Columbia River we get, the slower the currents get at the tides, the more these fish will disperse into deeper waters, okay? It's not uncommon to be in June, in July, and even into August, and catching summer steel at 25, 30 feet of water, okay? Now, when we're down at the, the coastal areas, the lower Columbia River areas, it's not uncommon to catch them in three, four feet of water, all right? Uh, keep that in mind when you're, when you're doing this, and the water temp does affect this in some ways. Obviously, as the water heats up as we progress through the summer, it's gonna push the fish a little bit deeper. The water will be clearer and that sort of thing. So that's some of the other stuff you wanna take into consideration. Um, anchoring is another great way to do this. Obviously, if we're gonna anchor, we're gonna fish out the back of the boat. Um, rigging these coon shrimp is super, super easy. I can show you real quickly some of the anchor setups that I would use, as well as some of the, uh, the plunking setups and high rig, but one of the anchor setups that I will run, uh, a little bit different than the norm, right? A lot of guys just run a spin glow. I'll run a small hoochie, a double size two uh, owner cutting points, and then I'll run a cheater here to help float it up, okay? There's a small corky underneath the head of this, this here hoochie, and then I'll run a smiley up front. One of the things we have is when we're fishing close to shore out of that main current, we don't have a lot of a lot of current where those those fish are, so I need something that spins very easily. And one thing about a smiley is it takes no current at all to move these, and that extra little flash at times is what gets their attention, right? So how do we rig one of these shrimp? Let me show you real quick. So I prefer let me grab a proper size shrimp here. I prefer to rig these when I'm fishing out of the boat. I rig them right through the back tail meat, okay? So I don't have to deal with putting it through the head, that sort of thing. So I rig, oop, I kind of missed on that one, darn it. I'm gonna get the heart of the meat right there. Work that hook through, okay? So now as that's hanging, you can see we've got the trailer hook down here, okay? We've got the shrimp here, top hook. And as you can see in there, that's focusing in, looks good. That's one of the ways I do it. Now, do I always fish a hoochie and do I always fish this sort of thing? No, okay? I do fish spin glows in those lower river areas. And when I'm fishing those spin glows, I like to shoot fish smaller sizes and I like them to be darker colors quite often, okay? Uh, darker colors meaning black wings. I'm a huge advocate for black wings, okay? I like a black 
orange, uh, white top. I've got a orange with, you know, the tiger stripe, black. Uh, one of my absolute favorites here, as you guys have seen in the past, silver chartreuse or uh, orange top, black wings, um, watermelon, super popular color. You see this quite consistently up and down all the shorelines. Uh, of the Columbia River seems to be this, the Pink Clown. That's another one that's very popular. But again, I like them in black wings. Spring Chinook Plunkin, thought I'd bring that one out and share it with you. It's a chartreuse black combo, white top, black wings. So anyway, enough on spin glows. You can see what I like. Can you use mylar wings and catch fish? Absolutely, okay? Those things work very well too. Um, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I do like to fish that size six spin glow. I think I mentioned that earlier, size six, sometimes size eight spin glows. Um, I do see guys at times running a little bit smaller spin glows, but I do want you to be paying attention to, you know, how well they float and what they do, okay? So we have, you know, sizes down into this area in the watermelon color here that were quite consistently used, it seems like, in the, the lower rivers. Um, here's another one I use once in a blue moon, okay? Smaller, white, tiger black wings a green tiger black wings anyway all right enough of that uh where are we at what else do we need to cover here so we've got the plunkin set up so we can anchor up you know we definitely definitely love to cater towards that lower columbia river um, be careful down there guys the wind can pick up it can get super dangerous there's heavy currents hardcore winds um, especially in the afternoons, they can get very, very dangerous. So take, take care of yourself. If you're going down there, pay attention to your wind forecast. Don't go on a heavy, heavy wind day. You just, it's near impossible to fish. So yeah, if you guys have questions, put them in the comments, subscribe. If you haven't, this is definitely going to bring, bring more and more and more out. Uh, Facebook, ultimate shrimp cure, ultimate egg cure. Uh, the recipe for the ultimate egg cure Coon Shrimp is on the Ultimate Egg Cure site. So www.ultimateeggcure.com. It's not written on the back. This is the egg cure formula to how to cure eggs. But if you go to the website, you can get the actual instructions on how I do Coon Shrimp with the Ultimate Egg Cure. And it's effective. It wrecks them too. Um, yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Ultimate Egg Cure, Ultimate Shrimp Cure, all that sort of thing. Uh, let's see some steelhead picks. Let's see some steelhead picks. Head to the social media, post them on the page, show me, send them to me. Uh, let's see how you're doing. I'm seeing lots of steelhead pictures already. I'm excited for everybody. It's been a long, lot, or a, a long time coming. It's been a lot of fun watching the successes with the, with the shrimp cures and the egg cures and stuff like that. I just, I really appreciate all the fun uh, of the pictures and stuff. So uh, keep it coming. Talk soon. Ultimate egg cure, ultimate shrimp cure. Talk soon, guys.